Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 2D clicker style game in Unity and welcome to the 13th and final episode of this series. This time we're going to take a quick look at a splash screen, we'll look at our settings, we'll look at building our game and we'll also look at discussing further advances in development from here on in. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that little bell icon to stay up to date with everything else on this channel and with that in mind, Let's get to work on this final episode. So, much in the same way as we've previously done with the scenes, we'll create a new scene. So file and new scene. And this is going to be a splash screen. And a splash screen is generally considered to be, for example, you have your game developer's name, logo, anything on here. In my case, I'm going to use my one, but you would obviously use your one. So to do that, it's gonna be real simple. And I like to be as simple and to the, straight to the point as possible. So, game object, UI, and raw image. And I'd like this to be spread all across of our canvas. So, let's select stretch, zero out the position. So it stretches completely, fills the screen, and I'm going to have it black. Next thing, let's bring in a couple of textures. Now, because we're going to use a couple of other textures in this tutorial, I'm going to bring in three different ones, two of which are irrelevant on this scene. So I'm going to bring these ones in, and this is basically just the logo for the splash screen, the logo for the game itself, and the icon for the game itself. All it really is for these two is just a little cutout version of the larger bit here for the icon, and this is just the thumbnail used for the videos. So image, so game object, UI, raw image again, and drag and drop this image over here, and you'll see it's really nice, that's all there is to it. And this is my splash screen. So when the game starts, you'll just see Jimmy Vegas Game Studios. Now, the key to this is displaying it for a certain amount of time, so let's say, five seconds, and then we move over to the actual scene. Now in doing so, we're gonna to have to move a couple of scenes around. So firstly, let's save this scene. Let's save it as splash screen. Next, file, build settings, add open scenes, and let's move this to the top. The reason we move it to the top is because scene zero is always the first scene to be loaded. At this point, it might be wise if you want to develop for any other platform to change your platform here and now. So just need to remember zero is splash screen, one is main menu, two is main scene. With that in mind, we need to go to our scripts, right click, create a new C sharp script, and we'll have this splash to menu and open that up in Visual Studio. So if you remember last time, we used the scene management namespace to be able to take us to a different scene. And we're going to have to do the same again for this one. So the idea is we're going to go using unity engine dot scene management. So we co one. However, what we have to do is a coroutine. So let's get rid of void update and all the annotations because we don't need them. And we're going to go I enumerator. We'll call this load menu, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And like I say, I want the scene to be visible for five seconds before we load ourselves into our main menu. So yield, return new, wait for seconds in brackets, five, semicolon. So then after the five seconds, we can go scene manager dot load scene and in brackets one semicolon remember that one is the main menu because we changed it so we just need to go into the main menu options in just a minute to recalibrate everything so the final thing we need to do is void start we need to start up this here and we go start co routine and in brackets load menu open close bracket close bracket, semicolon, and save. So now let's head to our main menu options and load scene one should be changed to load scene two at this point because remember, load scene two, number two, is our main game scene. That's where we're going. So let's head back to Unity. That will be the final script we write. 
So game object, create empty, <clears throat> excuse me, and just drag and drop, splash to menu, onto here. And you'll see the relevance of why this is scene zero at the end of this tutorial when we build our final product. So let's save the scene and press play. So naturally we should see this for five seconds and then head to our main menu. Start a new game. And there we go. And there's our sequence of events for the complete game. So next thing we're going to take a look at is some settings within Unity for building our game. Now, firstly, what I want to go to is edit and preferences and external tools. If we're building from mobile device, for example, Android, you have to make sure that these are set. These are required for when you want to build your game for Android, as you would expect. So you can download them from these options here, and then you can set their actual locations here. So building the SDK is all required here. Once you have these set, you'll be able to go to File, Build Settings, and providing your platform is set as there, you'll be able to build. But you don't want to do that just yet because there's a couple of little settings that you may find useful. Let's go to Edit and let's go to Project Settings and Input. Uh, not Input, sorry. <laughs> we did that a long time ago. Uh, Project Settings and Player. Now, the term Player in this instance doesn't actually refer to the player playing the game. It refers to the player that is playing the game, i.e. the application itself. So, firstly, company name, you would just put your name or your studio name, whatever you want. So I'll put JV Game Studios. Product name, obvious, Jimmy's 2D Clicker. Default icon. Now remember, this is where these textures came into play. So the icon, drag and drop, nice and simple. And default cursor, we don't need to worry about that. We don't really need anything at all. Now up here you'll see we have a couple of different options. We have the PC, Mac and Linux standalone settings. We have iPad, iPod, iPhone, all that, and Android. So we'll start with this one, PC, Mac, Linux. Resolution presentation doesn't really need changing because I'm assuming that most people on this are going to go for a mobile kind of um, aim. So you can probably leave all these as they are. They're not massively important, but feel free to play around with them. For example, you can change how it looks full screen, change it, you run in background. I'm going to leave all these as default for now. So we can click that, close it. Icon, you'll see has already been duplicated from our original icon there. Splash image. Now the splash image may seem a little bit confusing at this point because we've just created a splash screen. However, this splash image doesn't refer to what is in the game. It refers to the actual application before we load into the game. And I will point that out as we go further into this tutorial. And all you need to do <clears throat> for this one is this is our splash image. So it's a larger version of the icon, which is more representative of what the game is. So you could consider it something like box art. So we drag and drop that onto here. A couple of other settings if you want, but again, at this level, it's not too important. If you want to explore with these, please do. You're never really going to break anything. You can always revert things. Other settings, not massively important. These are all kind of preset in a, in a fashion that, uh, how can I put it, is already to the best of its ability. So again, you don't really need to worry about this. And virtual reality, it's not really a virtual reality game, this. Uh, iPad, iPhone, all that, it's relatively the same kind of thing. Everything will be duplicated from what we already have in there, so we don't need to worry. Uh, but generally, these kind of settings are already pretty well set. We don't need to worry at all. For example, the icon will duplicate to every possible platform that we're going for. But please, if you want to, have a go at these. Uh, if you are publishing, for example, for Android, you will need to create a new key store. And all that basically is, is just a key to sign when you upload it to the Google Play uh, store. That's all it is. It's nothing too important. You would just need to create a new one, confirm the password, and that's it. So we've got up to this point and we have all this ready. Let's build our game to test. So I'm going to save our entire project here. Save. 
And now we'll go to File, Build Settings. We've already got it run as this. So this is our testing platform. And now we can go to Build and Run. And it will prompt us to save. And let's call it, let's call it Clicker. Save. And it will now build the game for you to play as a standalone executable. So while that's doing that, let's quickly discuss where we can go from here with game development. Everything that we've learned within this series so far, you can use, manipulate, and advance on your own to create different effects. So for example, if you want to create different types of disasters, as we put it, you can use the same principle over and over again, just changing the bits and bobs that you would need to. If you have any problems at any point with anything, you know, please leave comments below. There's tons of other tutorial series that I have with tons of different things to learn. So you can always try and follow one of them to see how you go along. You know, there's like I say, my channel has hundreds upon hundreds of tutorials. Please check them out if you feel that like you need to learn a little bit more. So remember earlier I said about the splash image. This is our splash image. You think of it as box art. So screen resolution. Yep. Windowed. No, we'll leave it full resolution. Graphics quality, we have a couple of options here. You can rename these, I will show you uh, just a second. Um, select monitor, display one, yeah, so I've only got that. So let's press play and let's check this out. So this is the full technical build of our game. So as I say, all of this will work normally with um, you know, the general, uh, touch platforms, but as you can see here, we do have a little bit of a bug because this has gone a bit too high. So what we need to do basically with that is if we head back to our main menu, uh, sorry, our main scene, I should say, and it is this that's giving us a problem. It's stretched. What we need to do is just change that to anchor at the bottom. And it's all about position, really. The idea of building it and playing it like we've just done is to check out what kind of bugs and errors you will get. And it's a case of fixing it and repeating it. Nice and simple. And that's really all there is to this series now. There's not a whole lot more to learn. But please, like I say, feel free to go into the project settings and take a look at all the different things that you have here. For example, we have all of these here. Ultra, you can change the name of that. You don't necessarily have to be called Ultra. You could put that as Super Awesome. You know, that's the name. So where we had that drop down list of settings that we could change, this is where you can change what they are. And as I say, if you need to know anything else, please, please check out the other videos on my channel. There is an absolute ton of content for you to learn and develop with. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this series. It's only been 13 episodes long, a couple of hours, and you've got your own clicker game. So guys, I hope to see you around on the channel, and I thank you very much for watching.